time of coming together, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for Dr. Reed, Lord God, uh, for the gifts that you've placed in her, for the ministry that she has, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would just bless those that would hear her today, Lord God. Father, just equip your servant this day, Lord God, uh, to minister to your people, Father God. We thank you for her ministry, Lord God. We thank you for her witness, Lord God, in you. We thank you, Father God, and we bless you this day. And Father, remember our pastor, Reverend Tracy L. Brown, today, Lord God. Continue to meet every need, Lord God. And this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So for tonight, for our summer conversation series, um, if you're not aware, it is African American Mental Health Month. And we thought it was very important that we take care of um, giving out some information that will help us uh, because there's a stigma around African Americans um, seeking help for their, their mental health. And with everything that's currently going on um, in our country, in our world, our, the state of our mental health should be paramount for us because that's the only way that we're going to be able to get through this. So on tonight, we are blessed to have uh, Reverend Dr. Denise Reed with us. Um, Dr. Reed is a, a licensed clinical social worker. She is a woman of God. She is a licensed and ordained minister of the gospel. She is um, currently employed um, as a staff pastor at Cathedral International uh, in Perth Amboy, and she serves as the executive director of the Cathedral, Cathedral Community Counseling Center since its inception in 1997. Um, she comes well-equipped, uh, well-educated. She has earned a BA in psychology from Uppsala College. She has a master's of social work degree from Rutgers, a master's of arts in theology, studies from Eastern Baptist Theological Seminary, and a doctorate of ministry degree from Drew University. Um, and she graduated with the distinction of being a Hilliard uh, Fellow. She's taught at Drew University and Pillar College in New Jersey as an adjunct professor and served at Pillar College as interim department chair of psychology and counseling. She is an associate of the Family Therapy Institute of New Jersey and a member of the American Associate of Christian Counselors. She's done numerous trainings, workshops, seminars. She is much sought after. She is Pastor Brown's go-to therapist <laughs> when she's um, doing referrals. I can't tell you how many people I've said, okay, you need to call Dr. Reed um, because of Pastor Brown. Um, she is well-loved um, in the community. Um, and I love um, what her bio says. It says that Dr. Reed gives God all the glory for every open door and life accomplishment. Her daily testimony Reality and song is great is thy faithfulness morning by morning, new mercies I see. So I'm just going to let her go um, and do what she does best. I present to you, Dr. Reverend Dr. Denise Reed. Well, good evening, everyone. The Lord bless you all. And um, I thank God for the invitation. I give honor to uh, my bishop, Bishop Donald Hilliard Jr., senior pastor at Cathedral International. Also give honor to your pastor, Pastor Tracy Brown, who is a front line um, on the field, has been on the field for a long time. I, I, I greatly respect her dedication to the Lord and to the ministry. Um, she is a, a tremendous woman of God. Um, for all the years that I've known her. And um, also Reverend Holmes, who I've known for quite a while as well. Um, I would tell you a little something about him, but, you know, just, just, you know, thank God we're on this technology because he was my first um, computer teacher. I'll just say that. I brought my first computer from him and he kicked me out of class the first day trying to teach me. I'll just say that. So, so pray for him and thank God I came, I came through. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's good to laugh. As a matter of fact, it is important to laugh because laughter releases what I call happy hormones. You know, really, it, it really does. Um, the, the serotonin and the dopamine and those things in our brain, because we are chemical beings as well as spiritual beings. Um, and so for such a time as this, um, we need to learn how to 
how to laugh at least, you know, some part of the day. And I thank God for Reverend Kerr and for her call and for in, her invitation um, to this time. And I am so glad that um, we are taking this issue of mental health um, out of the closet, out of the, the, our bedrooms, behind closed doors and bringing it to the, to the forefront so that we could all have um, the help and the healing and the knowledge that, that we need to so we can be um, healthy and holy, amen? And so I, I need to read this disclaimer before I get started. Um, the subject matter of mental health can be a sensitive topic and the information and personal statements shared um, tonight with you are intended for information and inspiration purposes only. It is not intended to be used as a substitute for professional mental health services, diagnosis or treatment. Um, always seek a qualified mental health professional with any personal issues, concerns, or experiences regarding your personal mental health. You know, that may occur even um, upon a participating in this call. And if you're currently experiencing any life-threatening or mental health crisis, please call 911 or go to your local hospital emergency department. And with that being said, um, July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. And, you know, I, I thought about uh, this time and, and you know, some, some things that, that um, you know, have come to me. I've done seminars and, you know, throughout the years, you know, during May, during Mental Health Awareness Month, and then in particular, um, during July, um, during Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, However, we don't stop being um, people of color and we don't stop having um, emotional challenges even August 1st or after a month is over. So this is a conversation that uh, needs to continue. It needs to be part of all we do um, in our lives as Christians and as people of color. Um, you know, there's, as, as Reverend Kerr said, there is so much stigma around mental illness that you know we have to get um, educated, re-educated because we've lived with um, stigmas and stereotypes for a long time. Um, and, and when we do that, uh, we don't get treated. Um, we, we live untreated lives and undiagnosed lives. And you know, um, as, as the song uh, that we sing says, oh, what needless, pain we bear you know we take things to the lord in prayer but then the lord may ask, may may ask us or want to use other um avenues to continue the healing and bring us into wholeness and so i'm just glad we're talking about uh this issue of minority mental health and so when i thought about tonight you know i i, I thought about you know if we know better then we should do better so we can live better <laughs> and we can live our holy and, and whole best. You know, there's a slogan or I've seen people wear t-shirts, living my best life. And, and it's like, you know, are we really? You know, and that, if, if that's the case, then it's gonna take some serious work um, for, for that to be, to be so. And so, you know, uh, if I were to lift up a, a passage of scripture, I would, I would think about, um, or I would lift up 1 Kings 19 and think about, um, you know, prophet Elijah after he had his time with um, Ahab and Jezebel and they threatened him and, you know, he did miracles for God and showed the power of God. But then after it was all over, he was running. He was running for his life. And in 1 Kings 13, it tells us, um, that after he had, you know, went a day's journey, I'm at in verse four, um, and into the wilderness, he came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for am I better than my father's? And as he lay under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said, arise, eat. 
and behold, he looked and, and, and uh, there was a cake baked on coals uh, and there was water at his head and he did eat and drink and he laid down a second time and, and the angel came a second time and touched him and said, get up again and eat. And this went on uh, for another time. And then, you know, I, I just lift up this scripture because sometimes we want the Lord to do something instant. And when we look at Elijah and his state of being, he was done. He was depressed. Um, he didn't want to, to live anymore. Um, he, he didn't think he had any support or help. I'm in this by myself. And, and, with, and he had told this to God. And what God did was to just say, just take a break. Just lay down. And let me let me nourish you. Let me feed you. But it wasn't just one time. He sent the angel a second time, and he sent the angel again. And then he, you know, he 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 didn't come with a shout, but God came in a still small voice and ministered to him. So I lift up this passage of scripture because I want us to know that God is a God of process, and oftentimes, you know, uh, uh, we will have a great service. And I love to shout, uh, sweat, dance, and, and, and see the move of God, the mighty move of God. Then I know that come Sunday evening or Monday morning, things are, are, are very different. Reality sets in. And so, you know, it's, it's important for us to know that um, God may have ministered to you, you, you know, you may have gotten that, that, that encouragement. Um, but then what else do we need to do to be whole? And so oftentimes when I've ministered at the altar, you know, I've said, call me for a session tomorrow, you know, so God can, can be in the service, but then the follow-up or God may say, now go to a session. Um, you can have oil on you, but then God may say and make an appointment. And so we need to know that that's okay with God. And some of the stigmas have been, you know, it, you know, you feel like you're, 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 you have lack of faith or if you just prayed more or, you know, you don't need all of that. Or, you know, culturally we said, I don't want people in my business, but you know, it, people already know your business because of the way you're acting. So, you know, some of these, these stereotypes, some of these cultural messages that we've been living with have not been healthy. And we've really um, caused each other um, a disservice. And, you know, and, and it's, there's a book called Why Do Christians Shoot Their Wounded? We keep shooting each other, even when we're wounded, because we won't give permission. For, for people um, to get the help that is, that is really necessary. And so, you know, with, with Minority Mental Health Month, it, it started with um, Sister B.B. Campbell. And I'm just gonna lift this, this book up. Uh, perhaps you could see it. It's called 72 Hour Hold. And she started a, a movement because she had a daughter that um, had bipolar disorder. And there was the treatment was not really um, um, adequate for her. And, and so when you have um, mental health issues, you cannot, um, they can't keep you over 72 hours. But she knew after 72 hours, her daughter still needed some help. And so her and, and, so, and, and a group of African-American mothers who also had children and family members that had um, uh, mental health issues, you know, started a movement and they would help each other. You know, it was, it was like an underground railroad uh, type of um, system they had to keep the treatment going because you know, when we just get uh, a little bit of help, you know, like when we just put spiritual band-aids on things, when things are really cancerous, you know, we'll go out there and, and, and things will happen to us. 
And I say that today when we, when we live untreated lives, you know, especially, well, we can happen with brothers and sisters, um, you know, we won't get treatment, we'll get shot if we don't learn how to deal with some of our issues or, or, or episodes. And I don't want to see another, another life lost because of something being untreated. And so she, she, she just really made a clarion call, B.B. Campbell, her and, and these mothers, um, to, to, to bring minority mental health to the forefront and to begin to, to look at um, what adequate treatment would, would need to be like for us. So I thank God for her. And, um, you know, some of the things that uh, we do or don't do is that we, we don't, um, Dr. King said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Our life begins to not be its fullest when we keep stigmas on things or, or, or we say, Just don't tell anybody, don't talk about that. Um, um, we really, our lives don't, don't, they begin to end and we, we, we can put on fronts. We can, we can put on, um, we can, we, we're good at making stuff up. We're good at dressing stuff up. We're good at, at being articulate. We're good at hiding and fronting. Um, but when you get to the inside of things, we're really, we're broken. And so we can't keep silent about this anymore. And stigmas create silence. And silence uh, contributes to, to shame. And, you know, and we'll, sh we'll, we'll shame each other, even when we say things like, you know, we may give testimonies, you know, I went through A, B, and C, and D, and I didn't have to see no doctor, I didn't have to go for no counseling, I, I didn't have to take any medication. Well, <laughs> good for you. But there might be someone else that really needs that to, to be healed, but what you just did was shame them for even thinking about going for some counseling, because they will say, oh, wow, they didn't have to do that. So you're kind of saying, I didn't have to do it, so you don't need to do it. So a lot of times when I hear that testimony, I will probably get up and say, that didn't happen for them, but that doesn't mean that it's not okay for you if you want to talk to somebody, if you, if you want help. Um, so we have to be careful even in the church you know, with what we say. And, you know, and if you're going to say that, just say, this is, this is how my journey went, but this doesn't apply to everybody else. Um, and if somebody says that they've, they want to make an appointment, we should be the ones that will say, I am so glad. Do you want me to take you? Do you want me to sit in the, well, we can't now with social distances in the waiting room, but I support you 110%. That can go a long way, and that can really, really be healing for some people. Uh, Michelle Obama says, at the root of this dilemma is the way we view mental health in this country. Whether an illness affects the heart, the leg, or the brain is still an illness, and there should be no distinction. Um, but we've made that, that distinction. And so, what happens for us as people of color is that there's, there's like five contributing factors um, that keep the stigma going or why are barriers to us getting treatment. One is poverty. Um, you, you feel like I can't afford it or sometimes we, uh, we don't have, uh, there's a lack of mental health resources and I, and I get it. I know that we have not, uh, things have not gone well for us as people of color and we don't trust systems. And I know we have been used as experiments and, but there's a different day. This is a different day. Um, and I tell people, people, you, you know, if you have somebody journeying with you, people can't just do anything they want to you anymore. You know, you know we, we look at films like 
Uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest and think that, you know, if I go to treatment and, and if I get you know, hospitalized, I'm going to become numb and not be able to think or whatever. That was a movie. You know, that was back then. That doesn't have to be your life. And today, you, you know, if somebody's calling up a family member or something, what's going on with my son, my daughter? Or they see your face or you say, I need, I want to know everything you're doing, given, you know, what kind of, you have that right. And so sometimes I think we don't know how to, to navigate through the systems. And we just, we just go on things we heard or, or, or things we saw or what somebody else said, um, instead of saying, no, I'm going to find out how I can journey through this, how I can navigate, find out some people who know something, you know, to help you. Uh, get the help you need. Um, also, there's our culture and our honor and our pride. And yes, we as a people have had to, and we do, endure um, a lot of things. We've had to, um, as people of color in this country. We are one of the most uh, brilliant, creative, strongest people um, on the face of this earth. Um, it, however, sometimes that that cultural pride has kept us from getting um, the help that we need because we think we are not being loyal to being a strong black woman, you know, or or we are stereotyping, you know, brothers don't cry, and and you know, and I just really, really will will go up against some of those those statements. You know, I'll tell brothers, cry your eyeballs out because I want you to, to know that, um, you know, there is, there's, uh, tears are just heart water. It means nothing about your manhood. And, and women, uh, 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 sisters, as you know, we've, we've had to take on roles, but it's also destroyed us because we sometimes want to stay in that role. How can I say I need help when A, B, C, and, and everybody's dependent on me? Just say, you know what, I have to take this cape off, you know, and I've got to, I've got to take care of myself. When you go on the plane, what do they say? Put the oxygen mask on yourself first. But we are caretakers and we are proud people. And it has, it has kept us from, from, from not getting treatment. Um, then there's trends. Trends, uh, because we are on the internet and, you know, um, we are, uh, we will follow different people and celebrities and, and fashions and all of that. And, and that's just having like a herd mentality. And, and so we, we, we equate our self-esteem or our worth or, you know, with thumbs up. And if I have this on, or if I I've, I've bought this or, you know, or somebody likes me and, and sometimes we'll just kind of applaud being sick <laughs> um, instead of pulling back and saying, yeah, that's a trend and that's what everybody else is doing, but that's not good for me to do. And, and to be able to grasp our own um, individuality in, in so much as, God, what do you want for me? Because we are people of community. So I'm not just saying, you know, that we just say, I'm just going to be myself and just, I'm not saying individuality like that, but know who you are as a person versus following a whole group. When that, with what the whole group is doing is not going to be good for you to do. And then, yeah, they, um, I, you know, sometimes the church, the church and, you know, and I've said enough because, you know, I love the church and I want us to be a safe place. And I want us to be a place where people can say, you know, I, I love the Lord, I'm anointed and I'm depressed. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can preach, I'm gifted, but I'm also, um, I, I, will, I will cry all night long after I have given this gift on a, on a Sunday. So it's not, it's not either or, it's both and. And so we'll come, we'll come to church and We'll, we'll, it'll, it'll be something like this, you know, how you doing, sister? How you doing, brother? Blessed and highly favored. How you doing? If, if I was to really say, 
I'm depressed, I'm sad, I, I feel judged, I feel misunderstood, but we'll, we'll, we'll omit all of that and we'll just say, oh, I'm just fine. And so then we're not really walking in the truth with each other. And um, that's just not being, that's just not being a whole person. Or we'll, 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 we'll go with what I call the, the Flip Wilson mentality uh, uh, or, or theology. The devil made me do it. <laughs> you know, it's like, why, why do you ever think like that? Why do you have, oh, that's just the enemy. Just got to cast that, that demon out. So we will demonize things. Um, it, you know, but I remember taking a training and someone saying, um, a spirit needs to be delivered, but a wound needs to be healed. And so we've just got to be careful with our language, you know, just have, you know, and this is all about looking at things through another lens. That's what I, what I feel is going on, you know, getting another perception, just saying, you know what, because oftentimes after, you know, do some sharing, it's like, I never thought about it like that. So if that is, is what happens after this, I, I will say, thank you, God. You know, give us some thought. You know the truth about what's going on inside of you. And you know if you really, really need help. And I'm just saying it's okay, if you do, um, to go get it. Because, because we're spirit, mind, and body. That's how God created us. And But we want to just compartmentalize. And we've had to do that a lot because of living in this world and in this system and with the prejudice and discrimination and the racism and all we go through, we've had to learn how to live compartmentalized lives. I got to put my best on when I go in that office. I can't let them know that at home I have a, a, a bipolar um, child or um, alcoholic wife or whatever. I've just got to be this way for the next eight hours. And then, you know, uh, we, we might, we'll get back to probably some other parts of ourselves or our body will start telling us. We'll start getting the headaches and the high blood pressure and the, and the other illnesses because we kept so much stress inside. I remember a, 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 one of our leaders said, a Caucasian doctor said to her and she, she gave me permission. I said, can I share that? Because that's so powerful said to her, you know, she was saying, you know, I, I just feel anxious and, you know, my pressure's so high. And this man said to her, of course, you have five African-American sons. Can you imagine, and because this is coming up so much that other folks, you know, uh, white folks are, they want to know now about who we are. And so there's a lot of more, you know, doing a lot of stuff around, you know, they are understanding, they're out protesting for us. They're understanding now what goes on in our everyday life being black. And, 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 and so now they're like, oh my, you, you, you have to worry about being followed in the store. You have to worry about you know, when you get stopped, you know, your heart, you have to worry about if I leave home now, am I going to come back? We have to worry about, you know, as I said, the little boy who, who just, I think, hid behind his car when he saw the police officer. I think he was nine or so, and his father was watching him on a camera. And he said to him later, why did you do that? He said, because they killed George Floyd. Our children are having to deal with tremendous amount of stress in, in the suicide rate of African-American youth is going, is skyrocketing to this day. There are reports out and they are, they are, are calling racism a public health issue. Now this is, this is deep. This is our reality. And so we, we cannot carry all of this inside. That's just not healthy. We've got to have platforms like these. And God bless you, uh, um, Pastor Brown. We've got to start talking about 
you know, what's going on and how we are dealing with things day by day. Because we've been told, you just, you just learn how to deal with it. You just suck it up. That's just the way it is. But it doesn't have to be, <laughs> you know, the way we decide we're going we're gonna to live our lives. It doesn't have to be. It's like, yes, that's the way it is. And this is the way I'm going to uh, live my best holy and whole self. Um, so what do we need to do? We need to be careful. We need to be careful about uh, uh, non-compassionate statements in the church. Statements like, um, just pray about it. You just need to change your attitude. <laughs> Stop harping on the negative. You should be, you should start living or don't claim that or don't speak that. You know, I tell people, you know, I, I don't do that because if I, you came into my office and you said, uh, oh, Dr. Reed, you know, I'm feeling really, really um, insignificant. And I go, oh, don't, don't speak that. <laughs> don't you speak. What in the world would you be coming to see me for? Um, so we ha we have to, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, when people, when people get a chance to express their heart, they feel validated. But when we sh shut people up, they're like, something's wrong with how I'm feeling, what I'm saying. So, so um, you know, I always say there's more room on the outside than the inside. Um, and, and we, and sometimes we'll just kind of just minimize and say, oh, everybody feels that way. Well, not everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm Denise Reed. <laughs> uh, or, or sometimes you'll say, I have that same illness and we all feel a little, and I do not like the word crazy. I don't even use it now and then, or even more I don't like the word cray cray. Oh, they're just cray cray. You know, it's like we've got to, to just get that out of our vocabulary. Those are our non-compassionate statements. And we have to realize that depression is a flaw in chemistry, not in character. We are chemical beings with our Holy Ghost tongue talking self. <laughs> We're still chemical beings. When we get overwhelmed, we don't sleep, we don't eat, a chemical in our brain gets depleted. And that's when, uh, you know, sometimes it's like we do need to go get a psyche valve because there's medications that will um, bring these hormones in our brains back up instead of us paddling, trying to keep our head above water. Um, sometimes, you know, it, one doesn't work right and it's like, People will say, well, I don't like the way that made me feel. Well, just like you won't stop taking a blood pressure medicine because you don't want to get a stroke. And you tell your doctor, they say, okay, this one doesn't work. Let's, let's try something else. But we can't be afraid of some things that, you know, just may be what, what will help us live effective lives. Um, some of our, our non-compassionate Responses it could be blaming and criticizing. Um, it could be talking too much or talking too rapidly or talking too loudly. We'll over talk people when they're trying to just, because sometimes they can't get things out. And we'll just start talking fast. They're talking loud. <laughs> you know? and, and it's like, okay, you know everything. You know it, you know, you know. Tell me how I'm feeling. Okay, you know it. Um, you know, no, it's okay to be silent. And that pauses are okay. We have so much stimulation around us that we don't know how to be quiet. And in this pandemic, one of the one of the um, one of the practices that that I pray that we've learned is how to be okay with silence. You know, I was doing self-help tips early on and, and I was talking about taking media breaks. Don't keep that news on 24 seven. Um, be, be informed, but don't be consumed. Uh, 
have Alpha and Omega days. Begin it with God, end it with God, so that, you know, you'll have some good bookends, <laughs> you know, before you lay your head down. Um, and we, we can't make jokes about, you know, people's conditions. Please, please don't joke about, you know, somebody having, you know, emotional illnesses. You know, um, I want to just say something, Reverend Holtz, because it just came to my mind. I remember when I was, you know, you were teaching me <laughs> about computers. But I know that there was a, a, and it probably still is, a facility right up the street from your store. And I remember one of the residents would come in to your shop and you treated him with such dignity and worth. He could not even articulate, you know, what was really going on. But you and him had a language where he knew you were safe and he could come to you and be and be um, uh, uh, and, and, and be treated right and, and be fed. And, and I, I, I remember that. I remember that. And I, so I thank God you know, for you, for you treating somebody who other people would have not given the time of day to, um, that obviously had, you know, emotional illness. And so, and I'm, and I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up. So what can the church do? Um, seven, seven things. And I've said some of these, don't judge, read and research. And I'm talking about reading books that, you know, we have some great authors and I believe in reading, you know, people of color. There's some one, there is some really good uh, uh, research out there that we are doing about ourselves. Um, have, have book clubs about certain subjects, or if you don't want to even have a book club, have an article club. You know, and, and let's begin the process and talk with each other about this. And when you know you can't, you know, when you're going as far as you can, refer out. I can't do everything. There are certain mental illnesses that I am not an expert in. And I won't dare, I will be doing a disservice if I said, okay, come in and I can do everything. I will tell you, no, you know, I'm not, that's not, that's not an area of expertise. However, this is, this is something, this is a person, this is a doctor, this is a, this is a counselor that specializes in play therapy, you know, so that I'm giving you the best. Um, and stop, the, stop the, um, stop the stigmas. And I think the more permission is given from pulpits and from leaders and, and leadership meetings, you know, the, the more people feel it's okay. And recognize that mental health is complex. This is nothing, this is not something that, that's simple, but we have to get, get understanding. Um, and be careful, sometimes we'll Google something up, but you gotta be careful sometimes with that. And people will start diagnosing themselves or misdiagnosing themselves or or somebody else. I'll hear people. I looked on Google and I this is my husband. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh boy. You know, well, did you find anything about yourself? Um and 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 let me just say this. Let me just the last point is care for your own personal mental health. Sometimes we're so busy wanting to help somebody else fix somebody else that we don't care for our own personal mental health. I am somebody that believes in therapy. I am in therapy because you know what? I don't want to deal recklessly with your life. And I need to make sure somebody's checking me out so that that doesn't happen. I don't play something out on you. Um, I don't do any transference because in the church, we have a lot of codependent relationships. We have a lot of a counter transference because it's such a, 
an integral part of our lives and 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 you know uh, and part of our culture that sometimes we do some unhealthy stuff, you know, in our relationships. And so that's why when when people become leaders in our church, we set up long time ago that they had to go through a psych eval. And I had a um, I had a not a training. I had a group called Call to Wholeness, and it was five sessions. And we talked about family. We talked about personality. We talked about leadership styles. We talked about ourselves. Um, because you don't just take um, your calling into what you do in the church. You take you too. And God just doesn't call us to ministry. He calls us to wholeness. And um, we would have such a time that we, it, some of those sessions would end up with, 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 with some of the participants being on their knees, just crying and comforting each other. Some of the sessions, I remember somebody saying after the five sessions, we need to get a broom so we can sweep up some of these chains. So things don't have to be scary when we start talking about ourselves. And I think that's another thing that goes on. We get afraid. If I open up that can of worms, well, they're crawling out anyway. You know, let's just know what to do with them. Put them on a hook and get some fish with them instead of letting them eat up your life. And so uh, it's okay to have Jesus and the therapist too. And I'm just gonna end with my own testimony and then we could open it up for questions and answers and, and just thank you for letting me just share. Um, because of things that I've been through, um, you know, I, I am out of, out of seven siblings, I have one living sibling. You know, three of my brothers were murdered. My sister died suddenly. My parents, I have no aunts and uncles. Um, and so do you think that I didn't have to go process and work some of that out? I've gone through 11 operations, excuse me, eight operations in the last 11 years. Do you think <laughs> I don't have to go and, and process some of this? I. I you know, my, my vision, is, you know, is I've had vision challenges, a cornea transplant. And, and, you know, and I always say during my, during my, during that time with, with vision challenges, God gave me so much insight. And one of the things he said is just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> that put some real good boundaries on my life. And so you know, I, I'm not, you know, I've, I've lived through a lot of crises, family, personal, and, 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 and just, you know, to the, you know, I'll just leave it. I'll just say that. And so when we talk about PTSD, it wasn't post-traumatic stress <laughs> uh, disorder. I think we live in present traumatic stress disorder as well. But what I say I did with my PTSD and I do with it is for the P, I, I go to the Prince of Peace with some healing prayers. For the T in my, in, in my life, I, I have therapy sessions in growing truth. I wanna know the truth about myself. And for my S, I, 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 I go and, and I know God's grace is sufficient and I have good, honest support systems that tell me the truth. They don't co-sign my you know, stuff that's not good. And then for the D, I do the necessary work for wholeness. And I have a don't give up spirit. But that takes a commitment to my own personal mental health. And so, I leave you with this before we open up. Pray and take the pill. <laughs> go to service, but go to a session. Go to the altar, but then don't forget to keep your appointment. 
really, really, really. And I pray if you didn't know some things tonight, you know better and that'll help you do better so that you and I can really live our holy and whole best life. I thank you for giving me this time to share with you and however you want to move forward. Reverend Kerr, just let me know. Amen. Dr. Reed, thank you. Thank you so much for all the information from that download from heaven, because that's what it was. Um, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come and help us help ourselves. Um, I did want to um, say I'm grateful that you mentioned um, B.B. Moore Campbell because uh, when I talk to people about mental health, she's one of the people I talk about um, because uh, whether people know it or not, B.B. Moore Campbell before her death was a very famous author mm -hmm. and her daughter that you speak of who has the mental health issues is an actress, right, Maya right. Campbell. That's um, right. Used to be on the show um, in the house, in the house. Yep. with LL Cool yes. J. Yes, and she wrote this book. She wrote this book about her daughter, who yes. unfortunately is still suffering through mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's still suffering through mental health issues, even though people are reaching out to her to try mm -hmm. to get her help. Um, she's still suffering. Miss right. um, Campbell also wrote a book uh, for children who have. Um, are going through mental health issues called um, Sometime Mommy Gets Angry. Mm -hmm. It's a book for, ish, for children about mental health. So um, I'm grateful that you um, talked about that example. And I encourage everybody to um, look it up, research it, and um, read a little bit about it, about her, the struggle. If, you're, if you have the opportunity to read the book, 72 Hour Hold, it is an excellent, mm -hmm. yes, excellent yes. book. Um, but I thank you so much because we need this. Sometimes we do need to go lay on somebody's couch. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do need to um, talk about it because there's so many other things that um, we have stigmas around. Right. So um, I, I appreciate you um, on tonight and I thank you so much. Um, what I'd like to do now, if um, we can uh, mute any, everyone, if anyone has any questions that you would like to ask Dr. Reed or any comments that you might have about tonight's conversation? If you're using the app, just unmute your mic, but if you've dialed in, please press star six to unmute yourself. Thank you, Sister Najia. Thank you, Minister Bailey. Dr. Reed. Yes. I just met you. And I'm going to go ahead and say, I love you already. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Love you back, my sister. Only because I've been, I've been uh, doing, I've been going to therapy for about two years now, off and on for about two years. I'll say maybe two and a half. And I'll say it's been Good like the you. best thing that I have done in my, <laughs> my 33 years of living. And like, uh, I was over here screaming at the computer saying like, you're hitting <laughs> on every single point. And I'm so mad you couldn't hear me. I was your biggest cheerleader over here, I swear. Amen. So the biggest thing for me though, is um, the encouragement from others. Um, a lot of people don't have the right words to say. Mm -hmm. So when you were saying the non-compassionate uh, things that people are saying, are there, do you have any advice for other people that aren't going through mental health issues per se to, to have to someone that are, that is going through it? Um, you mean other than the, the statements that I said that aren't that aren't compassionate to say? I might have missed that part. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I did say that, you know, we need to be very careful with words we use. We, you know, I do not use the word crazy. You know, I, I, I don't even say somebody is struggling with the illness, mental illness or suffering. No, right. you know, they're living with it. You know, right. they've been diagnosed with it. You know, so language and words are very powerful. You know, right. so so we, we need to be careful and, you know, don't, and, and I was also, don't minimize it. You know, don't say, oh, you'll be all right. You know, right. and just pray about, you know, you know, validate it. You know, and also, you know, encourage someone 
you know, such as yourself. And I thank you for, for um, uh, being courageous and saying, yes, I go, you know, cause I want to be my, my, my best whole healthy self. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Reed. Hello. Hi. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for everything. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for caring enough to come on tonight. I am currently a student at Pillar uh -huh. in the LEAD program <laughs> in psychology and counseling. Uh -huh. So you touched on everything that we are learning. Mm -hmm. And Amen. I was happy to happy to hear that. You know, um, I'm currently in the abnormal psychology course. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the teacher, the professor spoke about wanting to even change the name, you know, mm -hmm. how they want to change the name um, instead of abnormal, mm -hmm. because that's not compassionate at all. That's right. So there is a lot of that going on with um, psychology and abnormal and um, how they name everything, how we talk about it and the stigmatism. So I really appreciate you confirming everything. And um, we talk about how important it is to self-care and that it is almost mandate that it is mandatory that as a psychiatrist or psychologist, that you have to take care of yourself first before oh, you yes. can take care of anyone else. It's, it's so. a must. Yes, if anybody you know works you know works with me, you, you have to be in treatment, some kind of supervision. You know exactly. We all need Nathan's. Yeah. Yes. You know, I say we all need we all need accountability on yes. some level. That's the word accountability. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, and God bless you. God I bless really you. enjoyed it. Bless you. Amen. Anyone else? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you so much for um, the presentation. I enjoyed it and it was very helpful to me. Um, I appreciate you saying that you yourself treating people, you um, get counseling yourself because you want to be your best self. And, I, and you talk, talked about transferring, your um, transference. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize that. And you also said that you bring yourself to the ministry and the people that you lead. So it's very important that we don't transfer what we are going through our past experiences with to others because it's like we're bleeding on them. So I like I like that fact that you brought that out so we can be mindful of that because um, sometimes we do it and don't even realize it. And people already have their own things. We don't want to add to it. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, and, and thank you for bringing it up because, you know, sometimes we feel because we have the testimony, you know, or we've had the experience that we can tell somebody how to go through their, their journey. And, um, you know, it, it, we just like to, to fix things real quick. And we like to, because we're caretakers, because we want to jump in and, and, and be, you know, somebody's parent or whatever. And, you know, and that's the culture of the church, mother so-and-so, auntie, you know, um, you know but, but then, you know, we, we need to be, be careful that we're not enabling, but that we empower, you know. Um, so I, I can give you, it was the old saying, I can give you a fish you eat for a day, but if I teach you how to fish, you eat for a lifetime. And so, you know, I don't want to, but some of us need to be needed. And that's one of the things I deal with in our, in the call of wholeness. Some of us, you know, we'll keep somebody sick so we can stay important mm -hmm. and stay needed. You know, like you, yeah, you call me and call me tomorrow and call me because, you know, I'll pray you through and call me tomorrow instead of, I want you to read this book or I want you to, you know, get with God for the next two days and let's talk about, you know, what you learn. We need to give people tools. So thank you, my sister. Dr. Reed, um, 
I'm gonna tell you, this was this is really good, really good. I can remember our, our early days at the cathedral, uh, where it was just Second Baptist on 101 Broad Street, and we had so many different people to come into the church, especially men who came from broken homes. And one of the things that uh, Bishop instilled um, was family. And I come come to understand, being in ministry, that broken families and dysfunctional families. Uh, there's a transference also into the church when we're trying to deal with one another as brothers and sisters. Because if my family at home was dysfunctional, then what happens is that I don't know how to interact with the real family of brother and sister within the church. Because they remind me, it's almost like the, the, the father who uh, was uh, who abandoned you or your father who abused you. You know, now all of a sudden you have other men around you that are supposed to be your brothers or your sisters in Christ. Uh, you kind of look at them with a side eye because you still don't understand what family is all about. And so that that thing about uh, uh, delivering that demon, but then at the same time, a wound has to be healed is very, very important because being in ministry, I find that I have to talk to folk. I have to release because what happens, things are put on me and I have to talk to somebody. I have to, if not to make sure that my, my gears are in, in motion right that everything is okay with me. So therefore, I don't become, um, you know, a physician to heal thyself uh, situation. You know, so what you still here today is, is priceless. And I would just say this one comment, though. Um, be transparent. Be transparent. Uh, being in ministry is hard. It's difficult at times. But be transparent. You're human. I always tell people, don't let the S on your chest stand for stupid. Let it stand <laughs> for like sense. That. Let it stand for sense that you have enough sense about yourself to understand that you need help, mm. that you cannot fix the world, mm. you know, especially when you're broken, yes. exactly. especially when you're broken, you cannot fix the world. And it's important for us to, you know, to say, look, I've been through, I've been through counseling sessions, you know, where I've shared some of the most intimate details of my life or what I've been through, mm -hmm. you know, I can share this because I share this in men's ministry all the time. You know, having been abused, uh, you know, uh, sexually as a kid, you know, I shared that and how the effect it had on me, you know, and I try to be transparent with men because some men have gone through that and they've kept their mouth shut. Yes. yes. They've kept their mouth shut. So I found out by me having been gone through it, delivered from it, being able to speak about it and, and speak to their speak to what's going on in their life, their, their shame, their guilt, thinking that's something that they've done. And instead trying to help them get free, but at the same time, not trying to make them codependent on me, you know, mm -hmm. showing them how to how to catch that fish themselves. Yes. And this is all I wanted to say, but thank God for you. Oh, thank God for you and thank God for sharing, you know, because that that's what it's going to take, you know, us being transparent and, and, you know, also knowing that 24 hour, 24 seven commitment doesn't mean 24 seven service. <laughs> Mm. You know, and, and, and sometimes we get that real mixed up. And, and there are times when I, even during this pandemic, where it's like, whoa, I have to step back. You know, it's like being being saturated. And it's like, mm -mm, you got to go somewhere and laugh. You cannot take another call. You, you know, get off of the, you know, the, the Zoom and, and all of that. And just, you know, and not be not feel guilty because some people will guilt trip you. Ah, oh, you know, we need to, you know, be there, be a vet, you know, mm -mm, I need some sleep. <laughs> you know, I need to laugh. I will not be any good. To, and, and don't equate that to my commitment. Right. You know, uh, and, and also to your point, we also need to know that I say in every man is a little boy and every woman is a little girl. And oftentimes, you know what that need and that connection's about? That little boy, that little girl that never got a chance to speak. And I remember when we had, um, when we had you know, a ministry, a facility, and, and it, was, it was four brothers. And, um, and I was doing you know, some groups. And um, I said, let's go over to the sanctuary. We went over to the sanctuary and I said, I'm just using, throwing out, just using a name. Take little Ronnie up there to the altar and let, and talk, and let little Ronnie talk to God. Mm -hmm. 
because because big man, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, that's what you've had. That's how you. That's that's all you presented. But you never let Lil Ronnie talk to God. And there's some needs, and 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 he he Lil Ronnie's gonna keep screaming, and you're gonna keep trying to medicate and or or go off. And so that kind of thing is, is so necessary. Wasn't anybody else in there? It was just myself and them. And do you know that the healing that went on? And somebody brought that up that I saw years later. Remember that time. And I'm like, God, I just, I just thank God. It was. You don't know what some things can do, you know, that are can be life changing. You know, just do what God says and then let God do what God wants to do. Bless you. Uh, I'd like to ask one question. Um, yeah. I remember my brother Timmy before he passed, we went to go see a doctor. And the doctor said to us, he says, African American doctor, he says, as African Americans, you know, he asked us, he says, are we stressed? And we told him, no. He said, the truth be told, sometimes you're living with stress and don't even know it. Mm -hmm. You're living with situations that, that are really stressing you out, but you've adapted to them, so to speak. Um, what should be some of the red, the red flag, the caution signs for us? Because sometimes we're in situations that may be crushing us right now. And we have not really, we've, we're, we're just living with it. We just think it's become our normal, our, our normal situation. What should be some of the red flags for us to identify when we're not, uh, when we're not really whole? Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe changes in behavior or, or character. It's like, you know, when you see someone that's, you know, pretty well, you know, can really kind of deal with things and, and, and deal with making decisions and, you know, functioning, um, effectively doing their job, but then all of a sudden, you know, they're they're not able to make decisions, or you know, they become angry, you know, or or combative, or or leave me alone. Sometimes, you know, not eating, not sleeping, or eating and sleeping too much. You know, sometimes it's like, wow, you know, what's going on? You know, I know with this pandemic, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, um, comfort food eating. Um, but you know, but but to to your to to your point, we need to look at some things, you know, and just you know, like you know what, can I just ask you something? And we have to ask if if it's okay, you know. And because I'm concerned about you, you know, you you don't look well. You know, people have said that to me, and I've had to say that to them. You know, you, you look like you're not getting enough rest. You know, or people start to complain, you know, mom just got my head, you know, like just getting headaches or stomach is hurting. Or, you know, you just, you know, you're isolating yourself. You know, you don't pick up the phone, you don't, you don't call. And it's not because you have a, you know, you said this is my time out. It's because you just can't take another thing. So yes, it becomes and, and you're that word adapted. We've adapted to too many things that are not healthy. And that's what we have to look at. You know, like, yeah, we, you know, I know we gotta deal with some stuff, but this ain't not healthy. You know, I've got to take some breaks. Even Mother Teresa after her her. Her nuns did two years of, of, of ministry. You know what they did in India. She would have them take a year off. So it's like, yeah. But we have to realize when it's time to, you know what? You get off the front line. You know what? You take a day off. You take a mental health day. No, you know, delegate. Um, and be able to say, I cannot do it. Like I said, just because I can doesn't mean I should. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Reed. Is there anyone else that has a question or a comment? 
If you're currently on mute, unmute yourself. Hello? Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi, how are you? Hi. Um, I'm glad she um, mentioned about the correct uh, terminology and words to use. Um, like I'm struggling now and I have a family member that's dealing with mental health. Um, I repeatedly tell the family member that I love, you know, I love her, I love her, I love her. Um, but besides saying, um, let me get you some help or sis, please come and get some help. What else can you say? I, I pray for the person constantly, but what else can you do and, and say? Well, I think you're doing you know, what you need to do, you, you, you know, you're not hiding it, you're keeping it, you know, before the person's face. Um, and people have choices. And sometimes they don't choose, you know, they, for whatever reason, and, you know, perhaps you can say, can you tell me, you know, what, what you're reluctant about, you know, is, you know, is there, something that perhaps we need to do to to make it okay you know do you you know so maybe just looking at those pieces of things um and then you know honestly sometimes people you know don't want to and she's uh, not, yeah because she's not receptive she normally just flips it on me i don't need no help you don't want to need the help well just you know you know and you just keep it, you keep it real, but there is, is really not something that you can force anyone to do unless they are harmful to themselves or to someone else. And then that's when, you know, it's a safety issue. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else with a question or a comment for Dr. Reed? Amen. Well, um, again, I, I thank have you, a Dr. Really, I'm sorry, Minister Kerr. Go ahead. I'm sure, I, I'm not sure if this was already addressed because I had uh, to take a call, but um, what, what happens when the physician, like the physician themselves, like a doctor, and uh, mm -hmm. you try to explain to them what's going on and they downplay it to it's nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then, then what do you do? <laughs> Go to another doctor. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but really, uh, you know, because if you know something is going on and it's being downplayed, you know, get us, there's nothing wrong with a second opinion. Nothing wrong with a second opinion. Amen. Amen. And um, I thank you for that, Dr. Reed, because one of my notes um, here is um, when you said recognize when something is beyond the scope of your handling. Mm -hmm. So some, sometimes even like in ministry, there are times people come to me for things and um, I am innately aware of what I can and can't handle mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because I understand if I try to handle something that's without my scope, it could be harmful to them. Right. It could be harmful. So we just, we just have to recognize when it's time to take a step back mm -hmm. and to refer out so that mm -hmm. the person can get the help that they truly, truly need. That's right. That's right. No, it's all right to know our limits. Amen. Yes. But Dr. Reed, I, again, I want to thank you so much, so much for this session. We truly, yes. truly appreciate you. Um, I'm with Christina. I love you already from my first conversation. <laughs> you know, Amen. Love you back. And yeah, even we on our phone, phone for a while. we was loving each other. Yeah. yeah it's we like, phone yes. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to thank you. Um, if anyone uh, wants your information, um, is it okay to provide it? Uh, yes. Yes. Can just, um, yeah. Yep, I can give you um, the number for the counseling center. Yes. I have the number for the counseling center. Um, if you want to reach out to Dr. Reed uh, for some help, if you have any questions after we get off the um, conversations, contact me directly and I'll make sure that anything that you uh, need can get to Dr. Reed. Amen. So everybody, just, just thank Dr. Reed.
God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. Love to your pastor, Pastor Brown. And yes, I'll send the same to Bishop Hillier for us. Please, please, please. I, I sure will. Reverend Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you again. And I just want to say it's okay not to be okay. Hey. And, to, and to get the help that is needed. Amen. Needed. And I couldn't recommend a better person than Dr. Reed. I really absolutely. Can't. And just for everybody's information, I loved her first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, bless you. Say. Thank you. Okay. Thank Good you night, so everybody. Good night. Mr. Brown, Good night. Mr. Brown, could you do us the um the honor of praying us out, please? God, we thank you and we bless your name on this evening. God, we thank you for all that was discussed. We thank you for the things we learned, the things we're going to implement. God, we thank you for what we learned about not to say to others, Father God, with this situation. God, we thank you for Dr. V. We ask that you would give her everything that she poured out to the people on this evening. God, continue to bless her, Father God. We thank you for the gifts that she has within her Father God and the population that she's reaching. God, I thank you, Lord, for this topic and how we're going to um, share it with others, Father God, in the days ahead. So, God, as we leave this platform on tonight, God, we ask that you would be with us and keep us until we meet again. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, you ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. God bless thank everybody. everybody. God bless you. And good in, get in good trouble, like they said about uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. good trouble. John Amen. Lewis today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Bye-bye.